Although most sports stars get famous for being great athletes, some also gain a reputation for being just plain weird. Whether it's their odd playing styles, superstitions, or off-field antics, these are some of the players who've been able to win fan support and the attention of the media for reasons other than their athletic skill. Number 10. Mark Fidrich Baseball pitchers are known for being some of the biggest oddballs in sports, and Mark Fidrick was no exception. Nicknamed The Bird because his curly hair and lanky build was reminiscent of Big Bird, Fidrick made a name for himself as a pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. He had a number of odd habits while pitching, among them aiming the ball like a dart, talking to it, and frequently strutting around the field after striking a batter out. He also had the curious habit of insisting that a ball that had hits in it be removed from the game, saying, I wanted to get back in the ball bag and goof around with the other balls in there. Maybe it'll learn some sense and come out as a pop-up next time. Fidrick was a sensation with the fans who would chant for him to be put in the game, and any time he did start, attendance would skyrocket. For all of his antics, Fidrick was known for living very simply in a small apartment, always insisting that if he weren't a professional ball player, he'd be pumping gas in his hometown of Northborough, Massachusetts. Number 9. Rene Higuita Colombian goalkeeper Rene Higuita is one of the wildest personalities in international soccer. He's known for a flamboyant style and his tendency to take huge risks. He often leaves the goal unattended and dribbles the ball far down the field in an attempt to score. This has been disastrous on more than one occasion, and a huge blunder in a 1990 World Cup match led to his earning the nickname El Lojo in the Colombian press. Higuita is probably most famous for inventing the scorpion kick, which was once voted the greatest soccer trick of all time. And he even executed the kick in an international game against England in 1995. Outside of soccer, Higuita has made the news on more than one occasion. In 1993, he was arrested for profiting in a kidnapping case involving the famous drug kingpin Pablo Escobar, and eventually served seven months in prison. He's also tested positively for cocaine while playing professionally. Number 8. Chad Ochocinco There's not much you can say about a man who's willing to legally change his name to his jersey number, but Chad Ochocinco, formerly Chad Johnson, was one of the most bizarre athletes of the NFL. He was a wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. During this time, Ochocinco had developed a reputation for his wild hairstyles, his media stunts, and amazing catches. He was also known for his creative and often hilarious touchdown celebrations, which have included performing CPR on the ball, mock proposing to a Bengals cheerleader, and pushing a cameraman aside and pretending to film the game. He was fined numerous times by the NFL for these performances and famously held up a sign after one touchdown that read, Dear NFL, please don't find me again. This led to yet another fine. In 2007, in order to demonstrate his amazing speed and to benefit charity, Ochocinco raced a thoroughbred horse 220 yards on foot and won. Still, his most famous stunt to date is probably the legal changing of his name to Ocho Cinco, the numbers 8 and 5 in Spanish, which has long been his nickname. Number 7. Turk Wendell A pitcher for a number of different major league teams from 1993 to 2004, Turk Wendell was famous for his eccentric personality and tendency to speak his mind. Wendell was a fan favorite during his time in the major leagues and was well known for his superstitions and strange behavior on the field. For example, he insisted that the umpire roll the ball to him instead of throwing it, and any time his catcher stood up, he would crouch down. He refused to walk on the baseline, and any time he entered or left the field, he would intentionally leap over it. He was also said to brush his teeth between innings, and supposedly wore a necklace made of teeth from animals that he had killed while hunting. Wenzel had an obsession with the baseball movie Major League and wore number 99 in a tribute to the film's main character, Ricky Wild Thing Vaughan. Near the end of his career, Wendell said that he hoped to play his last year of baseball for free in order to be a testament to the game, and insisted that the only things he wanted out of life were a wife, children, to play baseball, and to hunt deer. Number 6. John Daly Known among other things as Wild Thing and the Lion, John Daly is one of the more eccentric players in the otherwise stately world of professional golf. A big and imposing figure, Daly burst onto the professional golf circuit in 1991 when he won the PGA Championships, despite barely earning a space in the tournament as a last-minute alternate. He is known for his tremendous power, which has seen him average over 300 yards per drive throughout his career and helped him to win his second major tournament victory in 1995 at the British Open. Despite his obvious skill, Daly's career has been full of huge Huge highs and lows, thanks in a large part to his years-long battle with alcohol and gambling. 
He has famously claimed to have lost as much as $60 million gambling, and he has been arrested for his drinking on numerous occasions. As a result, he is well known for his tendency to blow up halfway through an otherwise strong tournament, and has been disqualified or quit on numerous occasions. In recent years, he's tried to get himself back on track, though he's still known for his prodigious use of cigarettes and Diet Coke to calm his nerves while playing. He once famously said that nicotine plus caffeine equals protein. Number 5. Ricky Williams Although considered by many to be one of the more talented running backs to come along in some time, Ricky Williams has gained a reputation as one of the oddest players in NFL history. He gained fame immediately upon his entrance to the league for his quickness, long dreadlocks, and his intense shyness, which led him to conduct many post-game interviews with his helmet still on. Williams has tested positive for marijuana on NFL drug tests multiple times and was fined $650,000 before unexpectedly announcing his early retirement from the game. After leaving football, Williams studied holistic medicine and Hinduism and traveled to India and Australia, where he supposedly spent time living in a tent. He returned to the NFL in 2004, only to fail a drug test again and be suspended for the season. While banned from the NFL, Williams played Canadian football for a season while teaching yoga classes on the site. He did eventually make a return to the NFL in 2007 and played for a bit for the Miami Dolphins. Number 4. Bill Lee Known for his counterculture personality and unique throwing style, Bill Spaceman Lee was a pitcher who played for the Boston Red Sox in the Montreal Expos in the 1970s. Lee often sported a wild, mountain man beard and was known for his candidness in interviews, openly admitting that he smoked marijuana and offered his opinion on everything from race relations to health food. His on-field antics were equally famous and included separating his shoulder in a fight with New York Yankees players in 1976 and threatening to bite off an umpire's ear during a 1975 World Series game. Lee's wild person personality and tendency to speak out against club management endeared him to the fans, and musician Warren Zevon even wrote a song about him, but his outspokenness eventually got him kicked off both of his major league teams. After leaving professional baseball, Lee ran for president in 1988, but was unable to get on the ballot in any states. Number 3. Mike Tyson One of the most feared and explosive fighters in boxing history, Mike Tyson has gained a reputation as one of the most unpredictable and downright bizarre athletes of all time. After a rapid rise to fame, Tyson's career took a hit following an upset defeat by Buster Douglas in 1990 and a subsequent rape conviction that saw him spend three years behind bars. After his release, Tyson attempted to make a comeback in boxing by defending one of his titles against Evander Holyfield, but he lost the fight by technical knockout. The two fought again a year later in one of the highest paying boxing matches of all time. In what would come to be known as one of the oddest events in sport history, the fight was called in the third round after Tyson bit off a chunk of Holyfield's ear, supposedly in retaliation for Holyfield headbutting him. The incident led to a near riot in the arena and Tyson was fined millions for it. After making a number of guest appearances in professional wrestling, Tyson returned to the ring in 2002 for a title fight against Lennox Lewis, and once again he made headlines for saying to Lewis, I want your heart, I want to eat his children. Tyson lost the fight by knockout and has since retired from boxing. Number 2. Dennis Rodman One of the most famous bad boys of professional sports, Dennis Rodman is a basketball player who played as a forward for a number of NBA teams throughout the late 80s and 90s. Also known as The Worm and Dennis the Menace, Rodman had a remarkable rebounding ability, collecting nearly 12,000 during his career, but he is best known for his antics both on and off the court. He famously dyed his hair a variety of colors, he headbutted opponents, appeared in public wearing a dress, and seemed to make a habit of being ejected from games. In 1998, he briefly married Baywatch star Carmen Electra and later had a high-profile fling with singer Madonna. Rodman had a big interest in wrestling, and while still in the NBA, he began a side career as a professional wrestler with his friend Hulk Hogan, even going so far as to participate in WCW events while still in the middle of the 1998 NBA Finals. He also cultivated another side career as an actor, appearing in the action movie Double Team along with Jean-Claude Van Damme and later as the star of the film Simon Says. Both of these films, well, they were huge critical and commercial failures. Number 1. Joe Namath Popularly considered to be the first media star in professional football, quarterback Joe Namath has been making a name for himself on and off the field for over 40 years. Namath is most famous for his audacious prediction that his underdog New York Jets would win the 1969 Super Bowl. He delivered on his promise and immediately became one of the most famous athletes in America. Nicknamed Broadway Joe for his flamboyant style, Namath would often wear a full-length fur coat while on the sidelines during games, and he enthusiastically appeared in racy television ads for women 
women's pantyhose, which caused an uproar in the media at the same time that it helped establish him as a sex symbol. Namath famously retired from the NFL for a brief stint in 1969 after refusing to sell his stake in a New York City bar called Bachelors 3, which the NFL commissioner claimed had become a popular mafia hangout. However, he eventually complied and was back for the next season. Since retiring from football, Namath has appeared in a number of films and television shows and even hosted his own late night talk show for a short time. In 2004, Namath was in the headlines once again when he drunkenly told ESPN reporter Susie Kolber that he wanted to kiss her during an interview. He then went into treatment for alcoholism. So I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out my other channel called Today I Found Out that is linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.